Hey, Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, hey, Halito, Osillo, Pura Vida. What's up, what's up? Hey, much love to Antonio. Much love to Antonio for the beat. You guys can hear me right you guys can hear the music you can hear me fine right let me get a one So uh, thanks to everybody for uh, tuning in, being here with me tonight. I wasn't going to go live, but I'm like, nah, let me just go live. Let me just, uh, got a lot of these images here. I just want to put out before they stack up. All right. So I just wanted to real quick, you know, I don't plan to go all night, but uh, real quick, just show some of the images, some more, the ones I got here collected. So yeah, much love and respect to everybody in the chat. Everybody tuned in later on. Thanks for tuning in. And, uh, yeah, let me see. So just for fun, I wanted to uh, go ahead and colorize some images with you guys. Just to, you guys see how I, I colorize it again, just in case you missed part 11. All right, all right. So we on uh, myheritage.com. It says here, colorize your black and white family photos automatically with the world's best deep learning technology. All right, so I got some uh, um, samples here. You know, I wanted to go ahead and try out with you guys. So go ahead and try out this one. It says here, some kind of welfare rights organization. All right. So we're gonna go to my heritage. I'm gonna throw the image in here, black and white. All 
Yeah, much love for Antonio for the beat again. If you're just coming in, welcome. Much love and respect. We're just showing how I colorize the uh, images. These American Indians. All right, indigenous people. You don't like the word Indian. All right, so there goes the first example. All right. As you can see, I got the uh, white lady, you know, and everybody who has a color or dark complexion is, is getting, you know, colored eyes. All right, so let me just go to the, uh, this is the original black and white. Pick this one because I saw an Indian and I'm like, wow, man, <laughs> what's this about? You know, maybe somebody out there already knows what this is about. All right, so let's go back. All right, color. You see that? And live in color. Any questions? Even the Indian is copper colored, right? All right, so we got a clear example of a pale skin person, their complexion. All right, the software did that on its own. All right, so we're gonna go to the next example. We got um, Martin Luther King here, some kind of boycott. We got the person right next to him falling asleep. <laughs> All right, so let me get the picture right here. Let's throw it up in here. All right. Again, much love and respect to everybody. Hope you guys been relaxed today. Had a good Saturday. We're getting through this, you know, whatever is coming our way. We just got to be strong and uh, getting through this. They can't stop this. All right, so here's the uh, the results right here. So you can see Martin Luther King right here. You got the pale skin man right here falling asleep. He, he can't handle it. He's tired. <laughs> Let's go to the, uh, all right, the black and white. All right. You guys can see, all right. Let's try out another picture. We're gonna try out this picture. Like New York City somewhere, I think. I don't know, I think it's New York. Yeah, I think it's New York somewhere. Yeah. Wow. Much love and respect to everybody out there. G West, Robert, B. Davis, Goliath, Shayla, Blazer, 71, Dante, B. Davis, Nally, JLL, Brandon, Chris Jackson, James Russell, American Indy, Marcus Hazard, Open Miha, what's up, brother? Chris Goodlow, La Will. Jessica McDaniels, a lot of you guys here. Megan Gordon, Tori's Gun. Wow, all right. I expect all you guys to tune in. Cause like, I'm gonna surprise them with a little live here. All right, here we got New York City. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. All right. Seems so like if you see any pale skin people, it picks them out, you know. All right. I want to try out another one. Is this one Rosa Parks? All right, got Rosa Parks right here. Rosa Parks in here again. Here she is right here. She was, uh, you know, Rosa Parks, very light skin. You know, as you can see, got a lot of shades here, right? Let's see how this comes up. All right. All right. So what do you guys think? The software works pretty good, right? I mean, it tint, it gives it a little red tintish sometimes and purplish, orangey, red tintish sometimes, but overall it does pretty good. Yeah, and Rosa Parks, yeah, she's very light skinned, you know. I don't know if you guys have ever seen her hair too, very soft and long. She looks like an Indian for sure, to me. <laughs> All right, so that's the software. 
All right, it says your colorized photos ready. I'm not promoting this. You know, I just want people to see again. A lot of people still doubting everything, thinking I'm colorized and making indie people dark. People actually think I'm making people dark skin just because they look like so-called Negro or because they look very dark skin, these American Indians, all right? So we're going to get started with the uh, presentation of the images. Let me just uh, get that ready real quick. Thanks for the patience, just getting through this, all right. So what I'm gonna actually, uh, we're gonna start out where we're gonna jam, we're gonna, you know, give thanks, we're gonna, you know, <laughs> much love and respect to the creator, all right, for everything and all the ancestors and everybody who's uh, paved the way uh, for us to be here in this moment, all right. So I got this song right here, it's, it's actually a Shawnee, a Shawnee him from the Shawnee tribe. All right, so I hope you guys uh, vibe out on this uh, tune right here. I think it's very spiritual. All right. Sabbath. Give thanks, the great spirit, for this moment. Much love and respect to Chickasaw, Rising, Laburn, Creation, Wanagi in the House, Titan Cherokee, Haku, Derwin Walker, Free Papas. Welcome. Much love and respect to Niesha. Thank you very much. All right, so what do we got in the screen here? Some indigenous women. We got a Haipa Maricopa, Indian woman on the left, holding an arrow br brush, stocks in hand, it says here. Let me just uh, zoom in a little bit. All right. Right here in the middle, we got Bessie Wolf. She's from the Omaha tribe, 1898. And then we got, uh, I think, I don't know. I didn't have her tribe. Yeah, I don't have her tribe yet. You know, a lot of these uh, images I've had for a while and uh, still digging on the tribes. And a lot of them I had, I didn't have the tribe, but, uh, you know, after digging and just running into uh, their image and different websites and stuff, I was able to trace. And then I got used to the clothing and the style and the culture and, and what they wore. And I started noticing trends and started getting really good at, I had known what tribe people are from, just from, you know, what they're wearing and stuff. And, you know, I was get, starting to guess pretty good and I was able to find a lot of these tribes. Still digging on her tribe right here on the right. All right, but um, again, this is her right here. All right. Let me go to the next image. OK, 
Okay, hold on. Sorry. Start right here. Okay. G G Y says she's Kiowa. Well, man, thanks for letting us know. You're joking. <laughs> All right. So we got Anna Handy Fontas. She's a Wampanoag. She's here in the left from the Chappaquiddick band, 1900. In the middle, we got She Came Spotted. That's one of them right here. And uh, her, uh, I don't know if it's a family member or a friend, female friend from the same tribe, Sioux Indian women. All right, right in the middle. And then we got Seminole women on the right. Just made a little bit for you guys. And again, I colored this. Using that software, you know, any picture that was, you know, messed up, I try to fix it a little bit before. Like if it was too blushed or too bright, too much highlight, uh, too small, the pixels, I try to make it bigger and uh, just let the software do the rest. And, uh, you know, this is what you get. All right. So ain't nobody trying to make anybody dark skin. You know, this is this is bigger than that. We just we're just trying to like correct history we're just trying to show the real thing and you know we owe it to a lot of these people a lot of these uh and these images she looks pissed <laughs> to me and you know it's very important to understand you know a lot of these cultures didn't really find taking pictures you know like something good you know like you know they thought that your soul would get imprinted in that and then you know and you know so a lot of them you know were forced to take pictures a lot of them didn't really like the pictures you know and, some of them do look like they're posing all happy, but yeah, in general, <laughs> I don't think they uh, trusted the camera too much. All right. Oh, much love and respect to Joseph, Joseph Lebels with, for the beat. A great adventure through the lost holy city. The lost promised land. All right. Three indigenous women right here again. All right, right here we got a Shayan woman on the left. In the middle, we got a Comanche woman from 1885. And then we got a Huichol woman, the Huichol people in Mexico uh, area. And um, they're very dark skinned. A lot of them, they look different. They don't all have like this kind of hair. They have, a lot of them have wavy, bushy hair as well. Uh, let me just zoom in. So this is a Shayan woman. Again, the software is the one colorizing this. I didn't, you know, darken any of these people. All right. All right. Right here, we got an Arawak Lacono girl from Suriname. 1959 on the left and then the uh, right we got Tasat Salatza Skokomish that almost sounds like my last name right Tasat Salatza Skokomish 1913 all right Arawak, Lakono. Looks like she got some body paint on. All right. It's Kokomish. You ever heard of this Kokomish people? Well, they're a couple color too. All right, so yeah, if you guys talk in the chat, it's hard for me to like go back and forth, but I'm uh, trying to keep track of the chat. All right. So yeah, I just made, I thought I'd start out with women today, but um, yeah. Let me go into some men right here. We got a Shoshone man from 1913, and then uh, we got Upsha, an Saroki man. All right. 
So Shoshone man right here. 1913. Very copper colored. And an Apsaroki. All right, so how many of you guys heard all these tribes? Shoshone, Apsaroki, a lot of you have. All right. I'm just, you know, honestly, like, to me, it's just overwhelming when I see, I'm like on, this one is 196. So I'm, I've, I'm already, I've made like at least 230 compilations. And I still got a lot more to make, so. And this is just the ones they had released to us officially. They have, there's still a lot of pictures they haven't released. And, you know, it, there's there's a general consensus here. If you, <laughs> after 230 compilation images. All right. Look at the clothing, the fringes, the uniqueness, the art, the creativity, the style. All right. The heritage, the culture. Why do they do this stuff? There's a reason behind everything. All right. We got another image right here. Right here to the left, we got Louis Joseph Debo and Iroquois Mohawk uh, man from 1959. In the middle, we got man not afraid of this run. He's a Hidatsa chief from Bismarck, North Dakota, 1890. All right, 1890. And then on the right, we got a Seminole man and his son in the Everglades, Florida. All right. Let me just zoom in to the Hidatsa man, all right, from 1890. Have you ever heard of the Hidatsa? All right, copper color, so called Negro person, right here. What you would call black. There's no way you can't say he's not dark skinned. We got the Iroquois Mohawk, Louis Joseph Debo here. Again, their clothing, their style, that's all there, you know, it's all their creativity, that's all their style. Can you imagine living back then and just doing your own clothing? I'm like, oh, I'm gonna rock this. I'm gonna do this color. I'm gonna do this design. I'm gonna look fly. He got his gun in plane, ready for the hunt or for any hijacks. Much love and respect, Nisha. Much love. All right. American indigenous men. Right here we got Loon. On the left, Loon, Lakota Sioux warrior. On the right, we got Bull Chief, an Indian warrior, it says here. All right. Anybody like to follow up on the info, go ahead and Google the info if you like. Verify. Again, I didn't colorize anybody dark. This is how dark these people were. All right. Lou Lakota. Lakota. All right. We got this other image right here. We got Kante or Chanteha, Jankton Sioux. 1872 on the way in the left in the middle we got blue thunder he's a dakota man in the left we got i'm sorry in the right we got Ara, an arapaho young man all right arapaho
All right, so the Amaru Khans. Much love and respect, Darwin. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, we're going to keep going hard, you know, as long as I'm able to, you know, I've already chosen my you know my path so you know i'll do i got i'm gonna do what i gotta do you know so whatever happens you know it's just this is all just blessings really you know it's already too late it's like con drop says we're running the victory lap already <laughs> so you know great spirit protects you if your heart is good if you want to do good if you're doing good for your people you know Right here in the left, we got a Kushada Indian man. In the middle, we got Chief Boy, a Blackfeet Indian, 1900. And on the right, we got a Cherokee man, ready for the hunt. All right, Kushada. Kushada Indian. Chief Boy Blackfeet, he don't look like you want to mess with him. Don't look like you want to mess with this brother right here. Blackfeet Indian. All right, that's all the way up there in Canada. All right, Canada. Copper colored people in Canada. Kushada Blackfeet Cherokee. Copper colored. Copper colored tribes of America. Yeah, don't go around his block. He, <laughs> he he look dangerous, man. He might be a peaceful guy though. You never know. <laughs> Chief boy. Chief boy, man. You ain't forgotten, Chief boy. All right, we got uh, the Pecuni Blackfeet group in front of a medicine lodge on the Blackfeet Reservation in Montana, 1902. All right, remember, you know, the software does the coloring. All of these people are copper colored. Different shades of them. <laughs> the tomahawk still had blood on it <laughs> yeah that was a dangerous guy I'm telling you man alright the Picuni the Picuni people you ever heard of the Picuni the Picuni Blackfeet Pikuni. We just saw Chief Boy. This is his people, the Blackfeet. All right. Chief Boy might be in here. Making sure no, no hijacks come through. And all the way in Montana. Copper colored people all the way in Montana. All the way in Montana. Where did they go? All right, we got a Mash P Wampanoag man here on the left. And uh, we got an American Indian. I don't know the tribe. We're still digging on it. Let me see from his collar though. 
I would say he could be a sock or a fox. They like to wear those collars. Maybe not. Piegan, a Piegan, Piegan, maybe. Out of these images they were very um small very so when you made them big you know they pixelate a lot but they were very damaged try to recover them but i knew i knew there was copper on in these black and white uh images and when i colored them you know this is what came up right here we got a blackfoot indigenous man on the left and we got three american indigenous people on horse on the right i don't know what tribe that is And just zoom in. All right, nice little scenery here and his horse. He got the nice, his nice little gear. All right. All right, you see. Very dark skinned people. I mean, just look at the white horse. I mean, the software knows what it's doing. They can compare the horse. On the left, don't know what tribe he's from. Still digging on it. He might be Apache. Or around that area. We got a Sioux Indian smoking a cigarette, it says here. A Sioux Indian smoking a cigarette. That's what the image said in the Library of Congress. <laughs> Smoking a cigarette. With his guy, his like semi Indian cowboy kind of gear. It's kind of flyer, man. I mean, in those times, it's probably he's, he's pimping. All right. He got his hat and he got his Indian gear on too. Or maybe he's repping his, both his cultures. He's just mad. He's like, man, you made me sit here through this. Like, I got to take pictures with you. And you just took over my whole land. Hey. He's like, yo, let me just smoke a cigarette here, man. Get my good side. He's like, get my good side. That's your cousin. That's your cousin, Wanagi. Yeah, those are some nice arm bracelets. All right, let's continue. All right, what we got here, man? We got Antonio Azul. He's a Pima Indian. All right, and then on the right, we got Kominak, a Kominaka dancer with skulls. He's a Ka... A how do you say that? Kuwakilt, Kiwakilt Indian, Kuwakilt Indian, or Kwa, Kuwakilt Indian. All right, very interesting, right? Let's zoom in. So you guys can look this up. What's a Kominaka dancer, or what the Kuwakilt Indians are? So you guys can see that's all up there, in Western. Western US, USA, all the way up there in the west, in the boonies up there. 
all the way up there in the boonies. But this uh, indigenous person is very copper. All right. And he ain't doing voodoo, he ain't doing none of that, and none of that is African. All right. And uh, on the right, on the left, again, we got Antonio. He's a Pima. The Pimas, a lot of the Pimas, very dark skin. A lot of them had uh, dreadlocks. I think that's what he has wrapped up up here. They like to have uh, dreadlocks. All right. The Pima Indian and the Kai Quilt Indian. All right. Have you ever heard of any of these tribes? All right, right here. We got a Shinnecock American indigenous family, the Shinnecock. They're, they're indigenous home in Long Island, New York, mostly. I believe. Shinnecock American indigenous family. All right. Did I colorize this one? <laughs> oh no, you didn't colorize these ones, Cody Mill. These are good. <laughs> the Shinnecock, huh? ODB, right? Yeah, ODB. Shinnecock. On his mom's side, right? On his mom's side. Wu Tang. A lot of the Wu Tang, actually. All right. American indigenous people. Not your postcard Indian, right? All right. So if you just join us, we uh, show it again in the beginning how the software does it and um you know hold up oh okay so yeah so the software does its own uh, coloring we showed some examples in black and white you can go try it out yourself basically um that's what i recommend doing and you can see how it works so right here we got on the uh, left two mojave men mojave mojave and then on the right we have shoshone children the Shoshone. Shoshone were very dark skin and the Mojave, a lot of them. Let's close up to these two. All right. Again, <laughs> you can go try out the software so many times. It ain't going to be wrong. You can go see yourself. Use your family pictures. Old black and white pictures you guys got. Any picture you want in black and white, go try it out. Or get a colorized image and then turn it into black and white and then go try it out to see if it goes back to its original color. I did that. I did that a lot to make sure. All right. I'm not here trying to make a fool of myself. We're just trying to show pictures that they never showed us before or in a way we never saw them before. All right. Because maybe we had seen and we just, you know, we're being very prejudiced. It's just from our, our own upbringing and our own prejudices and everything. And, you know, oh, they don't got my type of hair. They ain't my people. Or, you know, but what is your people? I mean, does it does mean that every dark person in the world is your people? Or who is your people specifically? You know, so something to think about now and, you know, bring controversial uh, matters here is just, you know, just to break the prejudices and everything. You know, as you can see, these are very dark skinned people right here. They would have never shown us people like this growing up. Like, I mean, just, you know, picture yourself right there trying to meet them in person. And, you know, you see how dark skinned they are. You wouldn't even think, you know, you wouldn't be saying anything bad about them, you know. Much love and respect to Nelly. Thank you very much. All right, so two Mojave men and Shoshone children. All right, right here we got on the left two shields at the Standing Rock 
Reservation, Standing Rock, Lower Jankatai, Indian, is a Jankatai, 1909. Then we got on the right Antoine Antoine Moise, a Flathead Indian from 1899. All right, so Standing Rock, isn't that what they had the protests and everything? So Standing Rock, so 1909. This is what a Jankatai and Standing Rock looked like. White in the background. All right. Lower Jank tonight. 1909. Standing Rock Reservation. Standing Rock. All right. And then we got a flathead man over here. Flathead Indian. All right. I believe they try to say that the cameras try, came out in the 1830s. I believe that's the narrative. They could have been out earlier than that. We don't know, you know. But yeah, that's the narrative, I believe, around the 1830s. All right. All right, then we got right here some American indigenous women, unknown tribes. Um, if I remember correctly, though, the ones on the left, I believe they were like in southwestern uh, U.S. or Mexico. Sometimes I download or I take screenshots because it's not downloadable and I forget to get the name or the info. But if I remember correctly, I believe they were from the southwestern U.S. or Mexico. And on the one on the right, not, not sure at all. But I just, you know, I think it's awesome, you know, how she got her horse. She, they, How they used to, like, you know, put the clothing on the horse with the fringes and everything. Matching her clothing. As you can see, there's a matriarch elder, copper colored on her horse. And her horse looks very high, actually. Like, when I was looking at the picture, looks like she got a nice, nice horse. Looks like it's a very tall horse. She even got feathers on his tail. All right, and on the other side, they got their own horse too. She looks a little gypsy to me, like, you know, but very dark skin, both of them. All right. She's representing her horse. She's proud. Majestic, matching. Her, ho her horse is even posing for the camera fo photo, the photo. Yeah. All right. Much love and respect, Ayesha. Thank you very much. American indigenous women, unknown tribes. We're digging on the tribes. And much love and respect, Edmosa Sheba. Thank you very much. Right here, we got uh, three couples here, right? So we got a Tepehuan mother and father and child, the Tepehuan people from the Durango area in Mexico. In the middle, we got some in indigenous uh, couple from the Suriname Caribbean. Um, they would be either Arawak or Caribs, mostly, most likely. I forgot the tribe. But yeah, they were from Suriname. I do know that they were from Suriname. All right. I got some very interesting images coming out of Suriname and French Guiana and all these areas in future videos. When we start talking about the Asians that came, that they brought, we're expecting to see Chinese looking uh, pale skinned people, but it wasn't like that. It wasn't just light skinned Asian Chinese, you know, looking people. <laughs> we're talking about Malays. Indonesians, Filipinos, um, you know, very South, you know, Southeast, you know, Asians or very, very copper color, very dark skin. All right. Much love and respect, Naisha. Thank you very much. This is a strong eagle and his wife. They're from the Spokane tribe right here. These elders right here. 
Strong Eagle and his wife Spaconi from the Spaconi tribe. Have you ever heard of the Spaconi tribe? Again, I didn't colorize any of these images. I showed you how the software does it. You can look for all these originals. You can Google all this info. You can Google Strong Eagle and his wife Spokane. You can see it'll pop up most likely. You can see the black and white image. Yeah, the software is not broken. Yes, these are copper colored people. Yes. All right. So, yeah, you know, I hope I don't get flagged for her, but, you know, just wanted to show. Let me zoom in on the Mexican couple right here. All right. Tepejuan. Tepejuan. All right. Much love and respect, uh, Jacqueline. Much blessings to you. Right here, we got a uh, Ute woman on the uh, left from Navajo Springs Reservation. Uh, I'm not sure where exactly that was. I think that was in Arizona. I'm not sure. But she's a Ute woman, the Ute, very dark skinned people, the Ute, a lot of history with them. On the right, we got Montauk Indigenous Woman. I believe her name is. Uh, Emma, I believe. Yeah, I believe her name is Emma. Um, I think we have another picture of her coming up in her indigenous clothing with her hair longer. I think she's younger or something. But uh, she's from the Montauk tribe, Montauk. Heading towards the northeast over there, U.S. And a Ute woman, American Indians. Much love and respect, uh, Lakeisha. Thank you very much. Right here. Actually, here we go. So this is uh, Emma right here on the next picture. So we got her right here. And like, I guess what you would say, European clothing and her hair tied up and everything. So what? Now she's just what? A mulatto or so-called Negro? A colored person? A free person of color? And now, right here on the left, let's just zoom in real quick before we get to the other ones. This is Emma right here. All right. With her long hair. All right. In her native native or cultural apparel. Emma P. Housey Hall, Montauk. All right. Right here in the middle, we got Estajeshi, Old Nell. She's a Navajo. She's the sister of a famous chief. I forgot which one. But if you uh, Google her, you'll get the name. All right. You don't want to mess with her either. She's strapped. She's strapped, man. She stays strapped. <laughs> she ain't playing. She stays strapped for the hijacks. She got two guns. <laughs> She ain't playing, all right? Yeah, she's a, she's an elder, but she ain't playing. All right? She's a Navajo. And on the right, right here, we got Cooped. She's from the Cayuse, Cayuse tribe. Have you heard of the Cayuse tribe? And they, she, she was referred to as Miss Morehouse, Miss Morehouse. And... She does have kind of like a turban kind of hat, right? Miss Morehouse from the Cayuse tribe. Miss Morehouse. Look at her clothing. Again, they had a lot of style. Look at her purse. She don't, you know, leave anywhere without her purse, you know. And as Tajeshi, she don't leave anywhere without her strap. You know, she's just on the lookout, all right, for the hijacks. Don't mind me, I'm just here chatting. <laughs> it's late, I'm tired, but we good, we all good, we're vibing. All right, right here we got, on the uh, left side, we got, from left to right, it says here, Margaret, Etta, Matthews Handy. Kathleen Madison Rocker Helms, Marion Kathleen Helms, 
and then Castilian, Dermont, Holden, Hillis. These are Wampanoag, Chippaquiddick uh, Indians or indigenous people. Right here on the left. And on the right, I found this. This was very interesting. This is subarctic North American indigenous people from up during the Arctic regions. They were also very copper. Um, again, I got, I think, Races of Men is the book. We got the reference that America has, is the stronghold of the colored races. Not just like a dark, very dark, you know, you know, they're not saying not not white, but just in a lot of shades, but in general, colored races, the colored races. And uh, yeah, these are subarctic people. I don't think they're Inuit, but they're up there in the Northwest uh, Arctic area, up there on top of Canada. All right. All right, Wampanoags and subarctic people. All right, right here we have uh, some more Montauk, Montauk Indians. All right, and it says left to right on the top, it says Charles Fowler. John Fowler, and then Pocahontas Farrell, and then Sam Farrell, and then seated says Marguerite Fowler, uh, George, and Maria Farrell Banks. All right, Montauk Indians. Let's just vibe out a little bit. All right, right here on the left, we got a, a penoscope man. The penoscope, I believe that's up there in Maine, New England area, Northeast, US, I believe Maine, yeah, mainly. Penoscope man, 1884. In the middle, we got an indigenous person from Nebraska. So a lot of tribes in Nebraska, um, I believe the, uh, what was the, the Paiweti, one of the original ones there. But we had the Osage, the Kwa, the Fox went up there. A lot of tribes ended up going there. And I believe he's from one of those. He looks like a, a Kapwa, Kapwa or Sock Fox Man. And in the right, we got Shewe Sik, aka Sour Spittle, in Ojibwa, 1877. To me, it almost look like, you know, like somebody in uh, Cambodia the, or Dawson, you know, from, you know, Street Fighter. But yeah, he's from here. He's a, He was all the way in Nebraska and the boonies, Nebraska. Yep. And we got Penoscope Man again.
카파 예 이거 so as you can see very copper color again I didn't colorize any of these that's just how they looked all right this ain't a tan So I see that the, the, the chat is very chatty. I can't really read everything that's going on. Hope everybody's being respectful and nice. And, you know, we just, you know, what we're doing here is just colorizing some old black and white photos. You know, let's not kill the messenger. You know, we just, you know, we just want to break some spells, you know, like, you know, everybody's saying pictures worth a thousand words but when it's visual like this it helps you know kind of like break your own high you know spells and hijacks in your mind you know all right in the middle right here we got two apache men all right right here we got a sioux sioux warrior right or chief oops where'd it go there we go And right here on the left, we got Chief High Eagle, Blackfoot, 1925. We've got his image before. I didn't have the uh, the complete uh, standing image of him, but he, his gear is, is dope. You know, look at all the fringes hanging. Look at his Adam and Eve. <laughs> his Garden of Eden uh, quilt. <laughs> yeah. But, um... I don't know if you guys noticed. He looks like Morgan Freeman a little bit to me. I don't know. He looks like Morgan Freeman to me a little bit. All right, you tell me. All right. So Blackfoot Indian, Apache, and Sioux. All, right, all copper colored. All right, so yeah, again, if anybody has opinions about the people, you know, again, that's it's just like conjecture and everything until you know the genealogy of any individual, you know, case by case, can generalize a group of people by a, a land mass. You know, you can group or, and try to determine people by a land mass. You call them people by a land mass, you know? So, you know, and then, you know, compare your genealogy with theirs, you know, See what you get. All right, right here on the uh, left, we got a Quechua a woman from Peru. All right, I know a lot of the, uh, they've actually found mummies down there with these same braids on them on the hair. Let me just zoom in real quick. All right. In the middle here, we got two young women. I don't know the tribe, but just look at them. Beautiful. Huh? And then we got a Kahatika, a Kahatika water girl. Have you ever guys, have you guys ever seen the Kahatika people? The Ka Kahatika or oh, Ahatika, all right? And they all look kind of like her. And they do have this kind of like clothing on always. They carry these things on their head. Similar to a lot of indigenous cultures around the world. Right, indigenous women and girls, the 
America. All over America. All right, right here we got um, Chief Yellow Bear all the way in the uh, left. He's an Arapaho, an Arapaho Indian. In the middle, we got Little Daylight. That's his name. If you Google that, that's what comes up everywhere, Library of Congress and everything, but they don't list the tribe. So I was still digging on his tribe. I think I've seen it once. And I, you know, again, I don't write it down always. I just, it's too many images. And then on the right, we got Cree Indian, indigenous man, a Cree indigenous man. And Chief Yellow Bear. Chief Yellow Bear was very, very dark skinned. Arapaho. And we saw the uh, Arapaho young man earlier. I don't know if you guys remember. All right, he was very dark skinned. He would be, you know, no doubt he would be called the Negro today, the young man. And, uh, you know, Chief Yellow Bear cut his hair, put him in the inner cities. Yeah, ain't nobody, you know, gonna call him a Mongol or white person, you know. This is, this is my opinion, but. <laughs> Pinch yourself, you're still here. It's only paper genocide. Much love to Blazer71. Right? American Indians. All right, this next image is just zoom in. We got Big Road's twin daughters, Ugala. Oh, I think I wrote this wrong. The Uglala La Su. I think I wrote this wrong. Uglala Su. Yeah, they were very dark skinned. But again, this was a very small image. I had to make bigger and it got pixelated, but try to hit, fix it up, enhance it a little bit. And then we colorize it, and that's what we got in the software. Very dark skin. Big Rose Twin, Ugala Su. And over here, we got Apache Couple on Horse. An Apache Couple on Horse. And just look how dark, very dark skin. Again, Apache. You guys know James Brown's an Apache, right? James Brown is Apache. You got Apache Heritage. Why did he be dancing like that? Man. All right. Much love and respect to Alman Deliman, Alman Deliman for this beat. Everybody loves it, brother. We're gonna just vibe up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, nobody's definitely, nobody here is obligated to uh, give me any money or donate or anything. You know, it's nothing I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking for, you know, at all, anytime or in general. It's definitely nice, man. We live in a society where money spins the world. Definitely ain't going to say no. But we ain't about that because I'm going to continue to do this whether people donate or not so uh yeah so you know all the little trolls out there man welcome welcome tonight to the little trolls you officially the you officially the main troll of the night congratulations you got your trophy <laughs> you got your little five minutes of fame give it up give it up 
for the troll in the chat. All right, this is a very interesting picture. I zoomed into it. Um, when I found it, I was like, what is that they're looking at? I didn't know if they were looking at a real person or not. Um, uh, much love and respect, Golden Spark. Um, so when I colorize it, I'm like, wow, man, is this actually an exhibit? Like, and, and, and you know, let me just zoom in real quick. So you got a bunch of little pale skinned white kids and a field trip museum to go look at the American Indian, the copper colored American Indian. Now, you know, this software, this colorizing software, is, there's a part of it where it enhances the faces. It does the software to try to fix faces or try to enhance them if they're just, you know. And I tried it out on this. I don't know if this is a wax. I don't know, you know, what is this? You know, I tried it out and it was scary because it looked like a real person. And I'm, I'm not kidding, you know, I'm not kidding. I, and, and so I'm like, were they stuffing people back then and putting them in an exhibit? Well, I don't think that would happen. The skin would, you know. But either way, yeah, very, very real, lifelike. Uh, much love and respect. Uh, true first. Appreciate it. So very lifelike. You know, they're not playing in this museum. They're like, make sure you make them look like the Indians there. So this is called the Plain, the Hall of Plains Indians in the American uh, Museum of Natural History. If you guys want to go, I don't know if they still have this exhibit, but this is a 1908. 1908. All right, do you see what they're looking at? <laughs> looking at you. You're 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 in exhibit. Do you understand what's going on here? 1908. You got you know. You got these little kids taking a field trip to go see you in an exhibit. Go see your ancestors as an exhibit. The people that once lived in the plains. Class. Here you go. See through the glass mirror. <laughs> Man. I just thought it was interesting. So I colorized this and I was just like, wow. I was just mind blown. I was like, wow. 1908 field trip, Riley. All right. So let's keep going. Right here, we got some children. All the way on the left, we got the children of Chief Two Moons, Northern Cheyenne. On the middle, we got a Choctaw girl near Tucker, Mississippi. I said near Tucker, Mississippi, around 1910. And on the right, we have a Match P Wampanoag boy. All right, let's just zoom into a couple of them here. This is her right here, the Choctaw girl. All right. Children's Northern Cheyenne. Then we got, um, again, the Choctaw girl, and we got the Mash P. Wampanoag boy. Look at that. Oh, I'm not colorizing him, right? Oh, because he got the hair, right? Oh, he got, oh, he look, oh, he does look like more like us, Cootie Mayo. So that one's good. Yes, Mansh P. Wampanoag over there in Massachusetts. Much love and respect, Mana Taylor. Thank you very much. All right, children, indigenous children. What was the future for them? What is the future for our children now? You know? Oh, hold up. We can't go to that yet. We can't go to that yet. Hold up. All right. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. The DJ ain't going so good today. But much love and respect again to Antonio for the beat. This beat's called the Amaru Khan. All right. All right. When we're looking at these children, Amaru Khans. All right. This next image, we got a... Um, Yeah. 
This is Sushi from the left. We got uh, Al Seawolf Curtis, a Chipaquitic Wampanoag. And on the right, we have a Sunni Pueblo man from New Mexico. All right, let me just zoom in. All right, whoops. All right, this is a Sioux man right here. Zoom in on him. We've seen him before. I just didn't have him in one of these compilations. All right. I'll see what's Curtis Wampanoag. So we got a Sioux, Sioux Indian, Wampanoag, and a Sunni Pueblo man. All right. Yeah, I know a lot of you are like, oh, he's a Mongol, but uh, he's very dark skinned. The Sunni people, Pueblo Indian. A lot of history with the, their people. A lot of history, deep history there. All right. Three different indigenous men, you know. Nobody can say who they are. You know, you can't judge these people. You know, they know who they are. They got their history. They got their people. They got their culture, their background. They got their genealogy. Most likely they know who they are. Trying to read the chat, just bear with me. And much love to all the real ones in the chat. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being here. I didn't actually expect to have anybody on. <laughs> and I said I was gonna be real quick. I never know how long I'm gonna take. All right. Right here, we got uh, Billy Bolex the third and his family members, Seminole Indians in Florida on the left. And on the right, we got some Apache Indians from 1938. All right. Again, seminal. And the matriarch right here, grandma. And then we got some. Okay. Hey, yeah, hey, hey. Need a vibe again. Yeah, ho, ho, ho. 
Much love and respect. Everybody tuned in. All honor to the creator, the great spirit. Thank you for this moment. Breath of life. For rising us up. Two beautiful women right here with their babies. Iroquois Tuscarora woman. The Tuscarora joined the Iroquois. They weren't with them initially. And we got a Blackfoot woman on the right. All right, right here on the left, we got Anishinabe and Ojibwe nation man from 1880. On the right, we got Kill Spotted Horse, Asiniboini tribe. Kill Spotted Horse. So Copper Colored Tribes of America, Kill Spotted Horse, and the Assiniboine Tribe. Have you heard of the Assiniboine? Thank you very much, Ms. Darden. Much love and respect. You're very welcome. Appreciate it. And right here, we got Frank Brown and the wife of George Osceola seated near a cooking fire at Miami John Tigers camp in the Everglades, Florida, 1910. Again, I didn't colorize any of these images. Let's pick out the Pilskin, you know, man over here and the indigenous woman over here, the wife of Osceola. I think we've gotten her name before in other images. We got a lot of their uh, images. All right. So, again, I appreciate everybody that, that tuned in tonight. You know, I actually didn't expect a lot of these people to tune in, and I was going to go real quick. I just want to just wanted to put out some of the images because they're, they're stacking up. I didn't want them to stack up. You know, I want to put them out as soon as possible so the world can see, so the world can see, you know, what they haven't been showing anybody. We've been having this, you know, all these uh, stereotypes and, these uh, images thrown at us all our lives about what they wanted us to picture the American Indians or the in indigenous people of America. All right. But um, yeah, it was not like that. You know, there's a whole different 
we're actually about to learn a lot, you know, now that we're able to study on our own and learn things on our own and things are coming out, we're going to learn a lot, a lot that was hidden, you know. So I appreciate everybody that's uh, riding the surf and the wave, learning together in this journey uh, with respect, with love, with unity, you know, giving thanks, honoring, you know, those who have been here before, the struggles, you know, the work, the, the, the culture, the stories, you know, the struggle, everything. And, uh, you know, don't forget, you know, about your creator. You know, you ain't just breathing. That, that's not just air you're breathing, just, just out of nowhere. So, you know, as indigenous people, very spiritual. We were very spiritual. Not religious, very spiritual. And so don't forget that, you know. Don't want to say too much. But uh, before... Uh, I leave tonight, just want to show, I have here a Chakta. We started out earlier with a hymn from the Shawnee, all right, in the video. So now I want to uh, finish, I want to leave with the, uh, with um, a Chakta a chant and song, all right? I know a lot of you say Chakta, so I just want you to hear what they're saying. Make sure you hear and try to understand what they're saying and see if you heard these words before anywhere. All right. So thank you again for uh, being here uh, once again. And, uh, you know, you have a great night. Much love and respect. We're going to get through this. You know, let's not vibe low. Let's not be in a state of fear because then we'll help them create that fear and that reality. You know, your thoughts are waves that, you know, can create and manifest into the physical. So make sure your head and your thoughts are right. Make sure your heart is clean and, you know, make sure you're doing everything with love. You know, we need love. We need to heal. We need to heal the mom, mama. Got to heal mama. Do you love mama? Mama loves you. That's wisdom. Do you love wisdom? Do you love mama? Do you love wisdom? You love mama. A wah breath. All right, so here goes that song. Yo ale yo ya heleya. 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 Yo Alleluia, 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 hey, hey, yo, alleluia, hey, hey, yo.
All right, so yeah, that was a Chakta song we just heard, you know. So, you know, get to know your culture if you you are claiming that, you know, Chakta. Hey, yo, hallelujah, you already know. So thank you once again for being here. We're going to leave out now for real. <laughs> but uh, yeah, much love and respect. I had fun. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, the video and uh, these images. I got a lot more coming. And I got a lot more research. You think I'm over? I did those Sephardic videos for a reason. It's about to get really good. About to get really good with the genealogies of a lot of these Americans. I'm gonna show you guys who they really are. You know, so everybody's on trial now. Everybody's on trial. Vibe up. Thank you again for being here. Much love and respect. Pura vida, pure life. That's how we say in my country. Pura vida, pure life. Pure life, pura vida. Wow.